afternoon, Professor. Hello. How are you doing today? I am well. Are you ready to answer 73 questions? Let's go. Okay, let's do it. So first, can you tell us who are you? My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and I am a senior lecturer and assistant undergraduate chair in the math department here at the University of Pennsylvania. Amazing. What are you passionate about, Professor Rimmer? I'm passionate about teaching mathematics and removing math as a as a barrier mm, got it to success what's your most impressive achievement uh being voted by my students for an award and then being voted by my colleagues for another award Ooh. Uh, university wide what was the yeah. award uh dean's uh, uh the school of arts and sciences uh dean's award for a great teaching congratulations so where did you go for undergrad I went to Youngstown State University in Ohio. I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, got it. What were you majoring in? I majored in mathematics. Okay, got it. So where did you go to grad school? I came to the University of Pennsylvania for grad school. Oh, and you just never left. Love it. Lovely. <laughs> so which experience was better, undergrad or graduate school? Uh, graduate school, without a doubt. Uh, the freedom and the, uh, the opportunity was so much greater. Yeah. Okay. What is your highest level of education completed? I have two masters, one in pure math from here and another in applied math from the University of Delaware. Mm, lovely. So have you ever had any other jobs besides teaching? I taught high school in the Philly public school system for three years. Mm. And I also uh, bounced around teaching as an adjunct at Community College and um, Westchester Villanova before coming back here full time. Amazing. So when did you know that you wanted to be a professor? Uh, in a multivariable calculus class in undergrad, I had a horrible professor and I ended up teaching the students in my class and I figured what can I do to get this person's job because it seems like I'm doing it. Oh my goodness. So then you chose to come to Penn. Yes. So you're happy you chose you Penn. Oh yeah, 100%. Yay. So where are we on campus right now? Uh, we are in between two engineering buildings. This is the main engineering building, Town Hall, and um, this is called Smith Walk, a part of the uh, scenic Locust Walk. Can you show me a little bit more of Smith Walk? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, let's, let's do it. <laughs> so what is your favorite part about teaching at UPenn? Ah, uh, the students. Aww. I just love um, their, their enthusiasm. Okay, so what class or classes do you teach? I teach calculus. Uh, we start with calculus. Um, unfortunately, I spend a lot of time teaching pre-calculus just to get the students' background together. Exactly. I remember that class. Yeah. <laughs> is that your favorite class to teach? Um, second semester calculus is my favorite. It's uh, Math 104 here at Penn. It's the, it's the final course for a lot of students, and so it's the one that gives them a lot of struggle. It's a weeder course. Got it. So are the students here friendly? Yes, yes, for the most part. <laughs> what are some common characteristics, passions, or career goals of UPenn students? Um, well, it's very nice. I get to learn about students going into consulting, students going into, you know, international banking, or even uh, working for Google or Amazon or Facebook. It's wonderful. What does this college offer that you don't believe other colleges offer? Uh, the opportunity, uh, the resources, um, and just the chance to be in a, a, a beautiful city with access to other major cities without too much trouble. Okay, one to ten, how similar is UPenn to how colleges are displayed in movies? One, nothing like it, or ten, it's identical from a professor's point of view. From a professor's point of view, I would say nothing like it. And we need to make a movie of the everyday life of a, of a college student on, a, on any campus, not just an Ivy League campus. Mm, agreed. If you had to choose a song to describe your teaching experience, what would you choose? Uh, my first thought is God's Plan by Drake. But um, being in Philly, uh, the Philly, the Philly anthem... Uh, Dreams and Nightmares, Meek Mill. Some of the yes. lyrics are very nice. <laughs> and the way it gets hyped and uh, starts off kind of mellow and goes very hyped. Exactly. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about you, Pat? Um, the, the sort of relationships with my colleagues, both um, in the math department office and the other professors. And then um, just, just getting to know my students and getting to know what else they do besides coming to math class and being a part of that. Okay. What's a typical day like and as a UPenn professor look like? Well, I teach uh, two courses usually on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, Tuesday, Thursday filled with office hours. And then um, pretty much after that, grading, lots of grading. Ooh. Is that your favorite part, the grading? Oh, uh, it's the worst part. <laughs> Fair enough. Do you check your online class difficulty or professor ratings? Um, I check the student reviews. I don't look at the numbers. But I definitely uh, check the student reviews to see, you know, and, uh, you know, what, what they think and how can I improve. 
Well, I only hear positive things. Oh, there's a few negatives. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. What's your most unique encounter in the classroom or in office hours? Uh, I had a student like want to take a picture with me, and I didn't understand why. But it turns out I was the only black professor or teacher she had ever had all in her life. Oh. And it was a monumental uh, sort of. Um, she wanted to be able to send it to her mom, and so I was like, "Oh yeah, sure." <laughs> wow. Okay. Do most professors have regular office hours here at UPenn? Um, yeah, yeah. Now they're virtual, but um, but yeah, uh, try to pick um, either Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, and just kind of have office hours all day. That's what I do. Oh, hey, what kind of tutoring or assistance is available within the math department here at Penn? Uh, we have many layers, but the, uh, m my favorite part is the ones uh, that are offered in, in the dorms. We uh, send a grad student out for three hours uh, in the evening, 6.30 to 9.30, and they uh, get a chance to help the students right where they're at, meet them where they're at. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So what's a UPenn stereotype that holds true? Uh, gosh, work hard, play hard. <laughs> I don't know about the play hard part, but the students definitely, uh, they work hard. Yes, we do. <laughs> if you had to pick a different subject to teach, which would you pick? Um, statistics, maybe. Oh, okay. I've always wondered, what is the best way to address a professor through email? Uh, at first, it's, you know, professional, you know, hello, Professor, you know, Rimmer. But after a while, when I get to know my students uh, a lot better, they, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with them calling me just by my last name or some come up with nicknames for me. It's fine. Oh, cool. What's the coolest nickname you've heard? Uh, Rims. Ooh. <laughs> How are the student to professor relationships here at UPenn? Uh, they're well. We have nice ways for uh, students to get to know uh, professors uh, better beyond the classroom. And so, um, and I get a chance to, um, they, they invite me out to their events. I, I travel with the men's basketball team just to get to know, uh, get to know them better. And I, I was a part of the men's basketball team at some point, helping them with math and basketball. So, yeah, it's fun. Okay. What does it mean for a student to take a professor out to lunch? Oh, yeah. It's an underutilized uh, um, opportunity. Uh, the, the, the university pays for the, uh, the, the whole lunch. It's in the university. It's in the nice, uh, nice building and you get to sit and talk for a whole hour. Not about math. <laughs> it's a great opportunity. I, I should be doing it more, but students just don't know about it. Got it. Yeah. So how much time do you believe an average UPenn student spends studying or doing assignments during a week? Gosh, 10 to 15 hours, perhaps. I don't know. That's, maybe that's not enough. <laughs> how many hours should a student study for your exams? Oh, my exams. You got to spread it out. You can't cram for my exams. Um, I'd say, yeah, it's been, it's been, you know, 10 hours spread out throughout the week. No cramming. <laughs> what are the average class sizes for your introductory courses? Um, in a non-pandemic setting, it's 160 to 200. But um, now we've cut it down to uh, about 120, about 100. Do you ever get nervous teaching in front of that many students? Uh, no, I did at first when I, you know, when I was first teaching. Major nervous, but um, no, not anymore. How difficult would you say your classes are one to 10? Oh, my class is tough. I would say eight, nine. Oh, wow. Yeah. Describe your teaching style in three words for me. Um, energetic, uh, caring, and understandable. I would agree to all three of those. <laughs> what is a, co a college professor's biggest pet peeve? Oh, just um, not getting the work done. Yeah, ba not, not getting a good balance between uh, the... the uh, extracurricular and, and, and the actual work. Okay. What are some characteristics of students who are successful at Penn? Um, they, they tend to work um, and spread out the work throughout the week. They, they come in, they, they, get to, they get to know the professor, they come into office hours, and um, they, they get to practice uh, taking exams by, by get, me giving them a lot of resources. Yeah, take advantage of everything. What is the worst excuse you've heard a student give for not doing their homework? <laughs> um, just, the, um, you know, I threw up, you know, just, 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 you know, I, I went out, you know, just, they'll be honest with me and they'll just tell me, you know, I went out and I was, you know, they had to call merch. They had to call, I, I threw up. I just couldn't get it done. <laughs> Got it. Are there research opportunities available for undergraduates through the math department? Uh, yes, yes, yes. We, uh, we, I, I don't do much research myself, but we definitely have uh, professors that take on students. 
even undergraduates, to help with their research. How has college changed since your days? Ah, the technology. Mm. Um, just in multivariable calculus, I had to draw all the graphs myself. There was no computer that I can go to and type in and have it spit out the graph. So the technology has definitely uh, changed and helped. Do you think because of the technology that students aren't trying as hard in school anymore? Uh, I think they, they, uh, they tend to have it easier. And, and sometimes I feel like it's a distraction, unfortunately. And so you gotta keep a good balance. What's a normal weekend like for you, Penn Professor? Wow, um, family time, but um, sometimes that could be mixed in with uh, going to see um, a game or going to a play or um, going to see a, um, a dance group. Um, just seeing my students and, and let them know that I, I care about you know them outside of the classroom. Yes, I love that. So you mentioned UPenn is a work hard, play hard school. Were you a work hard, play hard type of student? Uh, undergrad, uh, not my first couple years. But once I uh, once I got the swing of things, my last year, it was all it was all work hard, play hard. Ended up doing doing really well, and uh, also, you know, becoming a part of a fraternity and and getting to know you know so many more uh, people just like that that I would not would not have known before. Which fraternity are you part of? Cap Alpha Psi. Okay. <laughs> How would you rank your school spirit at one to ten? My pen school spirit. Yes. Ten. I have two drawers full of all pin t-shirts. <laughs> I love that. What's the typical temperature during the winter? Whew, boy, this is a little rough here. This is in the 30s. I would say um, 40s, 50s. Okay. How close is the nearest airport? Oh, 20 minutes. Really easy to get to from here. Fill in the blank. If I had known blank about you, Penn, I would have never chosen it. Oh, well, we have a professor that has expressed very racist views, and she still draws a check from the university. If I had known that she could be protected by tenure, um, it would have given me some pause about choosing Penn. Totally makes sense. What's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you in class? Uh, a student raised his hand and asked um, on the Penn Ultimate question on the homework, and I didn't know what Penn Ultimate meant. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what you said. <laughs> <laughs> what is the hardest thing about being a professor? Um, being a counselor, like having students cry in your office and, and having to be able to to sort of adjust and, and put on a different hat. Yeah. And, and, and be able to uh, help them get past whatever they're going through. What was your first day of teaching like? Oh, wow. I was so nervous. I mean, I was, I was a teaching assistant, so that helped. But it's a whole different ball game when there's, you know, so many students at one time. Writing on the chalkboard was rough, and that's when I just started... To, um, to do everything on PowerPoint. <laughs> Got it. What's the biggest mistake you made during your schooling? Um, not getting enough sleep. Mm. Sleep is very important. Pulling too many all-nighters. It's not. It's not. You know. It's not worth it. Yeah. You know? By the time. By the time you uh, realize that. You know. Sleep will end up getting you a better grade than actually staying up and, and studying. You know. Some, sometimes. What strategies did you use to be successful in college? Um, I treated like a nine to five. So I, I, um, I stayed, I stayed on campus, like doing work. I, I did work study. I, I, perhaps I, I did too many, um, work study jobs, but everything in school was nine to five, got my work done in between that time. And then after five was when I got a chance to be able to take care of, you know, other things and be able to, um, do extracurriculars. I love that. What advice would you give a student coming to Penn? Well, uh, <laughs> please go see your professor. Don't be afraid. It's, it's, it's very good for your professor to know your name. It's very important. <laughs> What's one of the biggest pieces of advice you've ever received? Um, your energy enters the room before you do. So please, you know, make sure that you come with good energy. Got it. How can students get to know the professors better in person? Uh, stay after class. Ask, ask questions. I, have, I find students don't ask enough questions and, and they think they could figure out on their own. It's, and then don't be afraid to ask a question. There's no such thing as a stupid question. How can you build a relationship with a professor virtually? Ooh, good question. I guess, you know, through Zoom or through, um, through uh, social media, I get to connect with a lot of my students after they graduate and, you know, find out how, you know, how life's treating them and see them get engaged and see them have children and, and stay connected to them that way. Do you feel like all socioeconomic classes are represented here at UPenn? Um, represented, yes. 
<laughs> Do you think you've met a future millionaire? Uh, change that M to a B. I've met future billionaires. Wow. <laughs> are you Penn grad undergraduate students academically competitive or do they help each other out? Hmm, depends on which school they're in. <laughs> but for the most part though, I found that, um, that there's a camaraderie and they, they do help each other out. Got it. Do the majority of kids on campus want to change the world or just be rich? Is there some, is there some way to mix? They want to change the world and be rich at the at same the time, same it time. seems like. <laughs> if you could change one thing about you, Penn, what would it be? Um, two things, um, a, a better, um, it's very nice to see the, you know, the new buildings go up. It'd be great to see a, a new math building go up. <laughs> That'd be great. And then um, maybe more space for the uh, multicultural centers. Yes. Uh, Maku and Posh and La Casa Latina. It'd be good to see them in their own building with a, with a lot of space. Yes. You friends in Philly, how do you like the area? Oh, I love Philly. Easy access to New York, two hours, DC, three hours, Baltimore. I, I could drive to Boston in five. Yes. And uh, it's really nice, yeah. Do you think the school needs more diversity? Oh yes, yes. They can always uh, use more. Um, we're getting to the point where it, it is increasing. I, I like how we are put, put initiative into first generation low income students. I see that program ri um, rising. I, I actually, my, one of my favorite things is uh, doing the pre-freshman program, getting a chance to meet the students before they even get on campus. Sometimes I'm the first p professor they see, although it might not be, you know, the typical look of a professor, they get to see me first. That's great. How many other black professors have you met here at Penn? Um, quite a few, I would say. Um, but I, I, could, I could see us, you know, needing more, <laughs> definitely. What would you tell your 20 year old self? Oh man, <laughs> um, just uh, don't work so much. Don't, don't, do, don't try to get too many other jobs and, and spend more time, you know, enjoying school, enjoying, enjoying the whole atmosphere of school. Where do you see yourself 20 years from now? 20 years from now, uh, most likely still here, but, but hopefully um, teaching students in a different kind of way. I wanna build an app, I wanna build a YouTube you know, presence and just be able to teach more than just my students in this Philly bubble. I in this love Penn that. Bubble. So should everyone who's watching this video apply to you, Penn? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Can't hurt to try. If you get rejected, I got rejected, it's okay. And, and you, know, there's, you know, you always end up exactly where you're supposed to be at. That's how I feel. I agree. And should everyone who's watching this video take your course? Oh yeah. Well, I get students wanting to take my course the minute like I had ED students that found out yesterday that they got in and they're already trying to reach out to me about my course. Like what? <laughs> yes, that's awesome. That's exactly how I was. That's the end of the video. Thank you so right. much. Thank Have you. a good one. Bye. <laughs>